Hey, I believe Marco mentioned would be he didn't exactly say mandatory that I recall. But I believe it should be. Immigration mandatory. debate in the Senate expected later this and, week. Uh, now to right, live coverage of the U.S. House. Yeah, members gabbling in for legislative uh, business now. The prayer will be offered by our chaplain, Father Conroy. Let us pray. Almighty God of the universe, we give you thanks for giving us another day. We thank you that you give us a share in your creative work, having endowed each with unique and important talents. On this day, we ask your blessing on the men and women of the People's House who have been entrusted with the care of this great nation's people. Because of the great blessings you have bestowed on our nation, may we embrace the opportunity to build a better world beyond our borders as well. May all that we do this day be for your greater honor and glory. Amen. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House his approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Wilson. Everyone, including our guests in the gallery, please join in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, invisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain requests for one-minute speeches. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, today is tax day. This year, millions of Americans spent more time than ever before preparing their taxes as a result of Obamacare's 21 new tax increases, which add up to more than $1 trillion, destroying jobs. The tax code is extremely complex, with over 4 million words and is comprised of over 74,000 pages. House Republicans understand that we need to reform the tax code to make it more fair and simple. Our budget proposal, The Path to Prosperity, not only repeals Obamacare and the job-destroying taxes associated with it, it also reforms our tax code to encourage new jobs by small businesses. By simplifying our tax code, closing loopholes, and lowering rates, small businesses will be able to begin hiring again and increase wages for American workers. The presidential and Senate budget plans keep Obamacare taxes in place and advocate for billions in more in new taxes. Raising taxes takes money from small businesses and destroyed jobs. I encourage the Senate and the President to begin working with House Republicans to clean up the tax code rather than increasing regulation and taxes that will destroy jobs. In conclusion, God bless our inspired. troops and we'll never forget September 11th and the global war on terrorism. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to remember the tragic shooting at Virginia Tech. Seven years ago, tomorrow, our country lost more than 30 lives, many of them college students with their entire future stretching out before them. One of those students was Ross Almadine, who lived in Saugus, which is in my district. He was loved by his family and friends and is remembered by countless more. I've had the honor to talk with his mother, Lynette Almadine, and have seen firsthand how she has turned her sorrow into action, working to prevent other tragedies like the one that took her child and to protect all of our children, our sons and daughters. And she's not alone. In recent months, we've seen strength of moms and dads across the country. Americans were mobilized and joining together to demand action to ensure that Congress passes responsible legislation to reduce gun violence. In my district alone, some 500 people in the last few days have joined me online to demand action on common sense legislation. Through my website, Facebook, and Twitter, hundreds of parents and grandparents and students have added their names to the hundreds of thousands of voices across the country calling on Speaker Boehner to bring legislation to the House floor to reduce gun violence. We cannot let some in Congress block action. We all deserve a vote. Thank you, and I yield back. 
gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this week, as hardworking Americans across the country submit their tax returns, we are all reminded of the heavy burden placed upon all taxpayers by our country's broken tax system. Like a snowball rolling down a hill, the United States tax code has grown and bloated itself over time, resulting in an avalanche of overregulation coming down on the heads of American taxpayers. There have been over 4,400 changes to the tax code in the last decade alone. That averages to more than one per day. Is it any surprise then that the United States boasts more tax preparers than we do police officers and firefighters combined? We're facing a four-alarm tax emergency in this country, and the House Republicans have a plan to address it. We stand committed to fundamental comprehensive tax reform that makes our tax code fairer and simpler for all Americans. A tax code that makes our corporations more competitive, that will stop the hemorrhaging of American jobs overseas and bring jobs back to our shores. Tax reform would increase hardworking Americans' take-home pay so that they have more money to live on instead of the government having more of their money to spend. Mr. Speaker, that's what American taxpayers deserve, and I yield back the remainder of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from the Northern Mariana Islands seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, 50 years ago, the first school to offer secondary education in the Northern Mariana Islands was officially named Hobwood Junior Senior High School in honor of Admiral Hubert Gladstone Hobwood, Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet. In 1969, when a senior, high school, a senior high school opened, the name was shortened to Hobwood Junior High School. But the school itself expanded. It now has the second largest student body of any Northern Mariana school, serving nearly 1,200 young scholars. Facilities expanded to a vocational education buildings, an alternative school, Lilala Malawats Academy, and a performing uh, arts building. Hubwood's motto is, we make every day the best. This upbeat attitude is reflected in a record of performance, including awards in regional forensic and theater competitions, spelling bees, and academic challenge balls. From humble beginnings in 1949 to this day, Hubwood has served a vital role in the lives of our students and our community. I have great confidence the school will continue to distinguish itself in the years to come. Congratulations to the Hubwood elites, and I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, the Senate's immigration proposal contains a fatal flaw. It legalizes almost everyone in the country illegally amnesty before it secures the border. As a result, the Senate proposal issues an open invitation to enter the country illegally. Millions more will do so before the border is secure. The Senate proposal would dramatically increase illegal immigration. The nonpartisan government accounting office found that only 6% of the U.S.-Mexico border is under full control of the border, of the border patrol. And 40% of all illegal immigrants are visa overstayers. Yet the Senate proposal legalizes almost everyone in the country before a system is set up to identify the visa overstayers. The Senate proposal amounts to amnesty first, border security later, if ever. It is fatally flawed. Gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? I ask the consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. It's that time of year again. Folks back in my district and all across America have had to part ways with our hard-earned money as we send our taxes off to Washington. How long did it take you just to figure out the complicated tax forms and get everything together just to file your returns? It takes the average American 13 hours. Not the best use of your time, is it? 
But then it's not hard to imagine when you consider that our tax code contains over 70,000 pages of regulations. That's not the tax system that our fellow Americans deserve. We need a tax code that is fairer and simpler for everyone, families, students, business owners, and all hardworking taxpayers. That's the kind of comprehensive tax reform that the House Republicans want to enact. Mr. Speaker, I yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from North Carolina seek recognition? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute, Mr. Speaker. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. National taxpayer advocate Nina E. Olson lists, quote, complexity in the tax code, end quote, as the number one most serious problem facing taxpayers. At about four million words in length, it's not hard to see why. Our tax code is four times wordier than the Bible, minus the grace and mercy. It's so complex and intimidating that 60% of Americans pay good money just to have someone else tell them how much the government is going to take from them. Families spend more on taxes today than on food, clothing, and housing combined. We should be working to lighten that burden. A simpler, fair tax code will help families save more and empower employers to pay their workers more and create new jobs. A tax code that doesn't require taxpayers to own a secret decoder ring or hire a legal team is the kind of reform we're working on in the House of Representatives. A common sense tax code will make a difference in the lives of taxpayers, and that's what this Congress should strive toward. I yield back, Mr. Speaker. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until approximately 5 p.m. today. The House gaveling out for now. Members will return at 5 p.m. Eastern, as you heard, for more legislative work. They've got four bills to debate under suspension of the rules, including one dealing with prosecuting tax delinquents. Live coverage of the House when members return here on C-SPAN. A reminder that we'll have live coverage